This is Pokala Inui. The background music is a song of sovereignty. You are listening to KWAI 1080 on your EM dial. We are broadcasting from the top of the Chinese Cultural Plaza here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Welcome to the program, or welcome back to the program, depending on what your particular circumstance may have been. If you've missed the earlier hour, uh, of the program, then I would suggest you missed a very active uh, discussion we have been having. And so uh, to continue with that discussion, and I recognize that at times time uh, seemed to be passing by so quickly, and yet we have so many voices that would like to be heard in this uh, discussion. I'm going to just go ahead and start up the program again. Uh, in the last two callers, we have had some very interesting uh, remarks being made. Uh, uh, I like especially this statement. I still need to reflect on it to see if I am in agreement with it. But it did catch my ear when the caller suggested that to understand something uh, requires forgiveness. And uh, that's interesting. I, I think to understand something and, and to be ready to set aside your own uh, particular views on that subject so that you can remove any blockage. It requires a certain degree of forgiveness or at least reflection uh, and to overcome uh, anchors that you may have been stuck in. And sometimes that forgiveness that is required is both of your own self as well as uh, of, of others. So, but that was an interesting statement that, that I found. Uh, the other is with regards to this consciousness and how we develop this consciousness uh, uh, formed by, I think, uh, what Michael said was uh, sort of the collective conditions that we come from. And then drawing this idea of causation. What causes us to feel this way or to develop or adopt particular ways of thinking? And some people say, well, it's merely genetics. It's uh, nature. That's how you are built. That's part of your DNA. Other people would say, no, no, no. It's just socialization. We are all essentially the same uh, uh, clean slate. But it is the conditions and the socialization uh, excuse me, the ways we are brought up that conditions our thinking. And uh, it's been suggested by Michael that uh, according to neuroscience, this new scientific uh, discoveries that are coming in, it is, a con it is both uh, your environment as well as your, uh, the DNA that you come with. Uh, and what happens is the environment merely allows different aspects of your DNA, but you are, you are already formulated with uh, possibilities, and your environment will use or will open up this expression of these possibilities. So it's a combination of both of these. And if you look at white privilege or male privilege or cultural privileges or even national privilege, I would add, uh, it goes to this idea that is it, it is both conditions and uh, the nature of the person or the, the, the setup of the collective consciousness, the nation, that uh, permits this. I would say that the changes in the condition that allow for this is we begin, or we can add capitalism, the, just a fact of success uh, allows you to believe that you have a right to certain things, uh, and that's, go, that's in accordance with white privilege or male privilege. 
And we have elevated the idea of physical strength as the initial measure of success, and that's when you find in schoolyards the idea of bullying. Or as people develop, as children develop, there will be a natural measurement of physical strength or speed, and not too much emphasis on intelligence. Uh, and it's always uh, reverting to the physical part, and this carries on by the not only physical strength, but then it's a measure of financial strength, whether it is uh, old money, family money, or money that you actually achieve yourself, that seems to give you certain privileges and you assume your right to assume those privileges. And so you move from physical strength to financial strength, eventually you come to military strength. And that sort of justifies itself by the fact that you are able to be so strong, then you must be an exceptional country. And so you engaged in that uh, circulatory uh, self-elevation uh, based on your success and that brings about greater success by investing more in military. Okay. And, and so while the focus in there, then you lose sight of human rights, the cultural aspect, the uh, musical inventiveness, creativity, and all of those other things. All right, uh, just some of my own passing thoughts. Uh, let me say that uh, you are listening to Hawaiian potpourri, and it seems that we really have a potpourri of thoughts uh, being circulated. I want to uh, remind the caller that I did realize that uh, he or she was on the line. I just wanted to finish these thoughts before taking up the telephone line. Telephone number here is 524-1080. So if you would like to call and share an opinion, that's the number to call. Let's go to our telephones. Aloha caller. Welcome to the program. Hello, call me. Oh, yes, good morning. Well, I think this idea of American exceptionalism is somewhat of an offshoot of Aryan or uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, exceptionalism, mm -hmm. or also known as white supremacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you notice the many of the proponents of this, uh, the modern-day proponents, they are in fact. Descendants of these lines, eh? Mm. Aryan or mm -hmm. Anglo Saxon peoples, eh? Yes. And, uh, of course, the United States was primarily founded by, I mean, the state itself was it was established by Anglo Saxon uh, mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. uh, primarily. Yes. Who well, I guess are, you know, regarded as what, like uh, cousins to the Aryans. I mean, indeed, Hitler regarded the British as almost being fellow Aryans. Eh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, and, uh, would... and so, yes, this idea, you know, we have, we have for example, the, the uh, Senator John Morgan, who from uh, Alabama, American mm -hmm. imperialist, who came here trying to persuade Hawaiians to be in support of annexation, but I don't want you to vote on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because mm -hmm. he very much held the idea, as did uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, other men, that the United States had exclusive uh, uh, powers, rights that it was were theirs to exercise. Mm -hmm. And uh, people who thought that uh, America should behave by the same rules as everyone else, mm -hmm. Theodore Roosevelt thought of them, for example, as being uh, rather pathetic and of the uh, international arbitration type, mm -hmm. uh, looking down at that idea very sneeringly. Huh? Yeah, that the, uh, the Pacific is... Any the... kind of uh, working out or uh, a... a a rather diplomatic uh, settlement to conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt was very much a proponent of uh, fighting it out, you know, because it, it, it displayed the very best uh, qualities of the Anglo-Saxons, in his opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, these are the kind of men that are lionized by America. We see his likeness up there on Mount Rushmore, mm -hmm. right? We see yeah. Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah. 
is a man who, when our queen asked him for, her, you know, the uh, privately owned lands back, uh, the crown lands, mm -hmm. he gave her five minutes mm -hmm. to plead for her lands and then denied her. And, you know, this is the kind of man they named the school after. Uh, what a what a slap in the face, uh, that our people. Yep. And, and of course, probably many of the people who continue this, they are ignorant of these facts. That's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. But uh, they should be no longer. I mean, these things are out already. Uh, why why should why should our nation continue to be treated as just unimportant, just a unfortunate victim? Of uh, mm. time and circumstance, and 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 the the uh, geopolitical maneuverings mm. of powerful states, and that all of this takes uh, precedence over uh, over the rightful place of of our state in the family mm -hmm. of uh, countries. Well, look, I just you went off there a little bit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, did I? Yeah, I, I, I get. Uh, it's it's very uh, irritating to uh, continue to see the, uh, the behavior of uh, of so many yeah. that everything is okay. You know, this is. Uh, we 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 should be content with uh, a little uh, federal recognition. Or, 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 or with the fact that uh, is a uh, candidate supports the Akaka bill. Mm. Yeah, this is supposed to be a a uh, litmus test for how much you love and care about Hawaiians. Yeah, is mm. that you support mm. the Akaka bill. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, this is sufficient to show that you you have a a sense of uh, knowledge and an appreciation. For what what happened here, and and for what the ill effects of of those wrongful acts were. Yeah. And it's and it's so easy to do that. It's it's so convenient, it's, especially when there's a good chance that the thing may never pass. Mm -hmm. But it lets you off the hook. Yeah, and uh, you know, Poka, I I heard that uh, John Wahe, right? Mm -hmm. He was going to address the Native Hawaiian Convention. Is uh, that right? Uh, what native? The one that I am associated with, or is it the convention that uh, is being prepared, uh, planned for October? I think. Oh, well, this one being planned yeah. in October. Well, it, it's not a roll call uh, commission. Uh, no, I I think this uh, woman uh, Danner. Uh, Robin, Robin Danner. Danner, yeah, and her association puts an annual gathering of uh, Hawaiians or Hawaiian-related issues together and has a large convention, and uh, it's a powerful, uh, effective convention, uh, a lot of integration of, uh, well, what is that, OHA and the federal government and state government, so it, it, it uh, brings in a lot of governmental activities within that convention. So that may be the convention that you're talking about. Now, Danner was also on this uh, roll call commission along with John. So this may be the convention that he's uh, assigned to or he will be speaking before. Yeah, it's unclear to me exactly which one. It, it may well be that uh, it, it, it is, as you say. Mm -hmm. You will be uh, speaking to the one that you've mentioned uh, formally. Yeah. Uh, if, if you were to... Yeah, in fact, I can't imagine that he would be addressing uh, the Native Hawaiian Convention. What, what would he say? <laughs> what are you gonna tell it? Well, uh, yeah, I, I could suggest what he might want to say. A lot of apologies for intervening in the. What was that? Uh, I I uh, I believe what he should say would be a lot of apologies for intervening in the works of the Native Hawaiian Convention by getting involved in this uh, the role commission. If he was to speak before the Native Hawaiian Convention, the one of elected delegates to the convention. Right, yeah. Who, who chose him, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, that whole issue of how they were set up and and the design for the Hawaiian Role Commission being really a design to push the Native Hawaiians into accepting an Akaka Bill-like relationship, an integrationist approach. Uh, yes. Yeah. I. I keep on hearing the words Aole Mako Ae Mina Mina I ka pōu kala o ke aupuni Ua lava mako i ka pō haku I ka ae kamaha o oka aina Those who would Who would just first after that thing Is federal recognition To me Wow I'd be surprised to see you singing the words to that song but it just, it's, it's, it's like speaking out of both sides of yeah, your mouth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks for your call. Thanks for that uh, analysis that you had given us. And uh, keep calling back. Take care. Aloha. Aloha. And uh, the words that he recited, Aole mako ae mina mina, we, we are not desirous of the heaps of money of the government. Enough for us is that, uh, that stone, that mystical uh, food of the island or of the land. And this was a saying attributed to Queen Liliuokalani as she was imprisoned in uh, Ilani Palace. And when they brought food to her at that point, uh, she pushed the food aside and she essentially recited words very similar to that. Uh, it was Ho'oke Ai, Ua Mako Ika Pohaku. And Ho'oke Ai is to, to fast. Enough for me, Ulava Novao Ika Pohaku Ika Ai Kamahao Kaina. Enough for me is that that stone, the mystical food of Hawaii. And so a lot of people have debated what was that stone, this poetic reference to the pohaku that she was talking about. Some Christians reinterpreted into that, that stone being Jesus Christ, and that is enough for her to survive on. Uh, from a more, uh, not necessarily more, from a different approach, from a Hawaiian cultural approach they say no it is a fact that we will not starve even if we have to go and pick off of the stones of our our seashores uh, and pick the limu and p pick the limpets and pick uh, those things and live off of the land we do not need the monies of the government now this call is a reference to that line in the song kaulana na pua famous of the flowers or mele ai pohaku the song of stone eaters. Uh, it's a reference to a very proud song of resistance that we would rather eat stones than take the monies of the government, which is in contradiction to the effort to integrate the Hawaiians into the United States. And for that, you'll get these largest of the government uh, monies that, that Danny Noe can promise or, or uh, Danny Akaka has suggested that we would have and the rest. But what is the price of our integrity? What is the price of our freedom? What is the price of our nation? Uh, that is the question. And so the contradiction for those who sing that song and yet push for uh, being satisfied with uh, an integrationist approach. Okay, so that's my uh, sort of my explanatory statement of that caller's uh, uh, last Hawaiian quote, uh, and of course his uh, analysis of exceptionalism, especially among the whites. And if you look at the Aryans or the Anglo-Saxons, they seem to be those who especially promote this uh, exceptionalist uh, concept. Uh, there was a time when uh, Ronald Reagan met, met with, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, 
head of the Soviet Union. It was not Brezhnev. It was uh, the guy with that, uh, it's not a tattoo, with a scar on his forehead. Uh, one who led uh, the Soviet Union to the Soviet Union's downfall and some would say to the improvement of what it had been to now being the split of these various nations that they had contained. Uh, anyway, uh, the statement made by Reagan as they were discussing uh, certain international politics was, after all, we must remember that we are all essentially Europeans which is another underlying statement that uh, a lot of this idea of exceptionalism comes from this type of mentality. Okay, let's go to our next caller, and uh, I recognize that we had two calls on the line. Uh, we'll take one call, the other caller has hung up. Aloha caller, welcome to the program. Yes, okay. Uh I can't give up on this. <laughs> um, um, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, and I don't want to keep you from going on to other subjects. No, go ahead. In the, um, I wanted to uh, correct a uh, word you used. In, uh, you said understanding requires forgiveness. No, it results in forgiveness. First, mm. in order to begin to understand, one must handle one's resentment or contempt or whatever. Uh, emotion one has against this kind of uh, domination so so that you must handle that first and and then understanding will result in forgiveness uh, i just want to mm. introduce that okay. and the reason i pursue this so intensely in this uh, subject is because uh the, the really serious repression is going to start uh, very soon internally uh, the uh, and right now the idea of uh uh, female uh, equality uh, is going to be uh, superseded by racism. Something else always comes in and mm. replaces uh, the, uh, pro any progress the uh, women are making. So, and I shouldn't yeah. use the word female, uh, I must use the word from, uh, women. So, and, and that's the reason I pursue this so intensely because we must get out as much information, and it can only be through language at this point. Um, it should be by uh, behavior too, but that will follow language. So it, it, it's going to require a very deep cultural change, and that's not going to happen in any of our lifetimes because the serious repression internally now against cit American citizens is going to start. But people will realize it because uh, both men and women will mm. be persecuted, and they don't really care who they kill, mm. but they will keep this hidden as long as they can. And once it comes out, then the repression really starts. So uh, I can say a few more things, but I'll let it go and have, have it you can change okay. the subject if you wish. Thanks again. All right. Thank you for calling. Aloha. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I won't recite it because you hit it, you heard it, and it was, of course, expressed much better than I could uh, restate what was just said. Uh, Carol had uh, earlier called and uh, helped me with uh, my memory, and it was Mikhail Gorbachev, who was that other Soviet leader, uh, getting into a discussion with uh, Ronald Reagan uh, in that statement. After all, we are all Europeans. All right, uh, we have, uh, I'll take another call. We have just a few more minutes before I go to some music, but let's get this caller on the line. Aloha, caller. Uh, thank you yeah, for well, calling. Well, yes. explain. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what I meant to say. You explained it uh, perfectly well. But you know, I, I want to refer now to the, the, the case that was announced on Friday, the Hawaii State Supreme Court. Yeah, before you get to that, and yeah. because it's going to be a long discussion on that case, <laughs> let me go to some music. i got to take a break, and then uh, you can hang on right. if you want. And, uh, I'll we'll, call back. Uh, yeah, if you call back, yeah. you take the chance of not being the next caller online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead and call back, and uh, okay. we'll take that call. Aloha. Oh, uh -huh. 
Ooh. 